I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. When I talk about chargers, I spend a lot of time talking about value line, like ISDT or a hobby mate, low price chargers that give pretty good performance, even though the quality might not be up there. And people always ask, when are you going to talk about a really high quality charger like the Progressive, I, the Progressive RC iCharger line? And I haven't done it before now because they're so expensive. As good as they are, I just can't bring myself to spend $300 on a charger. But today, I don't have to because this is the Progressive RC iCharger X6 and it costs $110. It does 800 watts. How do they get all the watts in there? So small. 30 amps, 800 watts, 6S, 110 bucks. Okay, okay, you got my attention. Stay tuned. Let's start by talking about what makes this charger really good. At a price of 110 bucks for 800 watts and 30 amps of output power, it is priced comparable. To, well, this is the ISDT T8. It does 1,000 watts or 30 amps, and it's about 100 bucks. So here we have an iCharger, and here we have an IDST, and they have about the same specs, and they are cost about the same, and I don't know what world I'm living in where that can even be happening, but there you go. And that is what really got my attention about this iCharger. Even if you traditionally have bought ISDT or other sort of budget chargers, you can consider getting a legit eye charger for all that's worth. Now, some of you will not necessarily be convinced by eye charger or by Progressive RC's reputation for quality and customer support and all that stuff. But even then, this charger still has a lot going for it in terms of the features that it offers. For example, this guy can do it's nearly its full output power, even when it's being powered by 12 volts. So if you only have a 12 volt power supply, you don't have a 24 volt power supply, you can still run this almost at its full capacity. By the way, that's also true for the ISDT T8, just to be fair, they both can do that. If you're not sure why you would need a 24 volt power supply to get the full capacity of a charger, then you should check out another video I made there's a link down in the video description about how to interpret charger specifications. And it also matters because when this guy says it can do 1,000 watts uh, and 30 amps, and this guy says it can do 800 watts and 30 amps, actually, those specs are actually the same because this is an 8S capable and this is a 6S capable. And if that doesn't make sense to you, check out the video down in the, in the description about how to interpret the specs of these guys. But finish this video first. Here we are looking at the screen, and if I just plug in another battery to charge, so... Hmm, there we go. We'll get... We'll get information about the battery, including, you know, all the things you would normally expect to see. If I then decide to charge the pack, I'm going to use this little jog wheel here on the side, and this is one of the things that's I would change about this. This jog wheel is really just terrible as an interface. It's not even a jog wheel. It's a little three, three position switch and it's really kind of annoying. Can I, can I have a, something that I'm going to hurt my little finger poking and prodding at? But if I just press that one time, I'll get this list of possible charge programs. So this is memory based. Whereas with uh, the ISDT charger with the hobby mate, you would just, you, you would just set your settings before every charge session. With this one, you're gonna set up different program memories and then be able to invoke the program memory when you go to charge, and you can change it as you go if you need to. So I've created one for LiPo 4.25. I sometimes charge my packs to 4.25 volts per cell. Let's not talk about that. So if I just press to select that, and then I can choose charge, storage, discharge, cycle, or balance only. And each program memory has each of those cycles stored in it. So uh, I can have you know a charge, a storage, a discharge so for, for one pack or one set of packs. That's how it would work. So if I choose the charge program, 
You can see that the default current I've set for the charge program is 15 amps because I'm often charging on a balance board. So I could create another program for charging individual packs with a different output rate, or I can just long press here. And then that lets me modify this, this setting, such as taking the current down from 15 amps to something lower. And you can see the, oh my gosh, are you serious? I really like the, the jog dial on like the Hobbymate charger or some of the ISDTs. This ISDT doesn't have the, it has buttons, that's okay. But I really like the jog dial because it lets you scroll quickly through a list. You can change the speed that you scroll at, right? So from going from 15 down to two amps, you can just spin the dial quickly and then you can slow down as you get closer. Whereas something like this, it's a little more tedious. So we can charge there and ready to go. Now everything I've shown you so far is just, okay, well, we got a charger here, right? They all kind of do that. But the iCharger has some features that other chargers don't have, and I want to show you some of them. And the first one is, here we got the charge mode, slow balance. We can actually change the balancing current, normal, fast, slow, and user-defined balance mode. And this is, if you don't know how battery balancing works, it's actually not the way that you might think. Normally the way a battery charges is the charger pushes charge into the cells and the voltage of the cells comes up and eventually they max out and then you're done charging. But balanced charging, the way it works is that you think, you probably think, if you've heard me talk about this before then you know, but you probably think that the charger is pushing current into each individual balance wire and charging the cell. So if you've got one cell that is a little lower, it'll just sort of top it up. That's not actually how it works. The way it works is that the charger, when it's balancing, pushes charge into the discharge lead and then sucks just the right amount of charge out of the balance lead to keep the full cells from overcharging. So when one cell hits 4.2 volts, the charger starts pulling current out of that cell to keep it at 4.2 volts while it continues pushing current into the main discharge lead. And this matters because uh, a, charge, a balancing current is limited by how much energy the charger can dissipate in a discharge and that's usually not a very big number. What this does is it lets you trade off the speed of balancing versus the precision of balancing. So by choosing fast balance in the iCharger, it'll kind of roughly get them pretty close to 4.2 volts, but not spend a lot of time getting them to 4.2 oh, 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 oh volts, right? And you can, make, you can make that decision for yourself. That's pretty cool. Now, one of the things that iCharger is known for is being really precise and really accurate from the factory. And we're going to test that using this little device, which is a K-Moon voltage reference. I have a video about this where I calibrated one of my ISDT chargers, and it was not super accurate. There were a couple uh, pins that were off from the factory. So let's take a look, and I just want to show you how I'm going to use this. This guy is outputting a very precise voltage. It's putting out 5.00049 volts when it says it's putting out five volts. And I'm gonna measure that here with this meter to confirm that the meter is accurate. You can see here the meter reads 5.000 volts. And if we go down to 2.5 volts, this guy's supposed to put out 2.500, I think it says 71 on the back. Let's see what we get. 2.500. Oh, oh, so this meter is, as far as we're concerned, dead nuts accurate. Now, if we take a look at the eye charger, we can see that the batteries is reading 3.806, 3.809, 3.806, and 3.810. Let's take a look and see what we got. Oh yeah, 3.804. That's pretty freaking close. 3.807, 3.805, and 3.8, oh, come on, get it, 3.808, so let's say it's accurate to within a couple millivolts. So yeah, it's living up to its reputation of coming from the factory correctly calibrated and accurate, which as much as I like ISDT is definitely not 
something I can, I know I always calibrate them after getting them. Now, it's not enough, it's not enough to like damage your batteries or anything, but it is certainly nice that when you get a charger, you can feel confident that you don't need to go and get one of these little voltage references and a precise multimeter and then, then check for yourself. Just buy the damn thing and use it. Another thing that makes the iCharger stand out is its ability to discharge in interesting and useful ways. And most chargers can't discharge a battery very fast because the way they discharge is they just run the current through a resistor bank internally and the resistor bank gets super hot and the chargers limitate, that's the chargers limitation on how fast it can discharge your pack. Typically they'll discharge at maybe one amp at most. And that takes a while. That'll take more than an hour to discharge a 1300 milliamp hour pack. And if you just came back from not getting to fly because you got rained out, then you've got 15 packs. It's going to take you hours to discharge all of them using a typical charger. The iCharger has two unique discharge modes. One of them is the ability to discharge back into another pack. So this is a six cell pack and maybe I've got a great big six cell or five cell pack or maybe I've got a car battery. Some people just use a car battery to charge off of. Well, instead of just wasting all that energy as heat, you can do what's called regenerative discharge and that means it takes the power out of your flight packs and it puts it back into the supply battery which, you know, then hey, it's good, good for the environment too. You're not just wasting it as heat, you're, you're saving it for later. That's nice. And of course it can go faster. It can go up to 800 watts or 30 amps, assuming that your supply battery can handle that, which is way faster than you can normally discharge. The other interesting thing the iCharger can do is what's called expanded discharge. And the way this works is that you're going to need something like this. Now this is a wire wound resistor and it's capable of soaking a lot of energy, way more than the, sorry, way more than the little internal resistor bank here in the iCharger. And what you would do, this is not actually set up with the right wiring to use for this, but you wire this guy actually here. We can do it, ooh, we could do it with this. This is my smoke stopper. This is actually wired correctly. You put the external load in series on the positive battery line and then the iCharger knows that you're gonna soak so many amps in this guy and it will discharge at a higher rate knowing that it's not having to soak all the amps. So basically again it just lets you discharge faster but in a controlled way. When I want to discharge with this guy normally what I'll do is I'll just plug the batteries in and at that point if I left them plugged in and walked away this would just totally discharge them and kill it. So so then I just pay attention and try not to let that happen. But when using the iCharger, using external expanded discharge mode, it can discharge into this guy and not actually, and just stop when it's done. That's pretty cool. I should point out that the Hobbymate Duo D6, which is a budget charger that I reviewed a while back, uh, it also has the ability to do that same kind of expanded discharge because the Hobbymate Duo is a two-channel charger. It's a little simpler to wire up. You just plug the load into one of the channels and the battery into the other channel and it discharges into it. And that's, that's something I've done before. So what don't I like about the iCharger X6? D there's two main things. One of them is that, as I mentioned earlier, this freaking stupid... This is so annoying to use. It's just so tiny and fiddly and I don't like it. I wish I had a dial, maybe, like a click dial or something. It would be so much nicer. The other thing that bugs me a little bit is that I'm not sure I love the memory selection as the way to charge. And the reason for that is that, like, I, I often am doing different setups each time I charge or discharge. Sometimes I've got five batteries on the parallel charge board, sometimes I've got 10. And so I'm, I'm usually having to tweak the settings each time I do it. And with this thing, it's you select the memory and then you go where you want and then you long press and then you go down. And it's like at that point, the memory is slowing me down more than it's speeding me up. If you have a lot of repeatable charging programs that you do, then this is going to be great for you. It has up to 32 charging programs and you just set them up and you just run the one that you need to run and you're good to go. But if you're like me and you're not often charging exactly the same parameters, 
it's a little faster to just do like the ISDT or the Hobbymate do, where you just need to set it up each time. Th those are really, I mean, I tried to think of other things I didn't like about it, but I gotta say, it's really good, other than those two things. And it's got the Progressive RC reputation for quality, accuracy, etc., and it's 110 bucks. And that brings us to the other reason why you might not buy this charger. If you don't need an 800 watt, 30 amp charger, maybe you would like to spend half as much on something like an ISDT Q6, which only does 300 watts and like 14 amps, but it's only like 60 bucks and you're gonna save some money. But I think if you're in the market for an ISDT T8, if you're in the market for a charger around 100 bucks, you gotta give this guy a look because it's, yeah, you gotta give this guy a look. There are links down in the video description. If you want to get any of these chargers, definitely check them out. It means a lot to me when you use those links because if you didn't know this, those are affiliate links and they're one of the ways that I support myself with this as my full-time job. And by the way, in case you hadn't heard, you don't have to buy this exact product when you use those affiliate links. You just click the link and anything you buy, I get credit for it. So, you know, buying a new refrigerator on Amazon, click that link. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the iCharger X6 down in the comments. Is, is this, is this, is, is this guy dead? Is the ISDT T8 just, no, nope. is it dead? Is, the, is this one gonna take over? And uh, what else is there in the $100 price range that gives us a run for its money? Tell me what you think. Happy flying.